This is the part of the course that's called National Income Accounting. What we're going to do now is called National Income Accounting. This is good stuff. Huh? Any accounting majors? Yeah? But this is the part of the course where you have a little bit of an affinity for accounting. You don't mind econ so much. This is a great employment prospect if you are interested. Usually you need a grad degree in econ, maybe a little bit of statistics. You usually work for the government, so you are a civil servant. And they start off at pretty decent salaries. National income accountants can start off at 80, 85,000 per year. This is not an easy job. This is serious stuff. What we're going to go through, I'm going to show you exactly what the National Income Accountants do. Now, for me, this is not for me. I tried my hand at National Income Accounting very early in my career. It didn't take me very long to say, this is not no. for me. Right? It's a little hardcore. The accounting people, because you kind of think that way already, you kind of like the process that we go through here. I have a tremendous amount of respect for National Income Accountants. I am a macroeconomist, and if it is the case where the accounts are not correct, if it is the case where these things are not put together properly, I would not be able to do any type of policy. It's the same for you. So the starting point is to figure out the different measures that we put together so that we can prescribe whatever needs to be prescribed for the progress of the overall economy. So we're going to start that process here. National Income Accounting. This just generally, this measures the economy's overall performance. Yeah? So national income accounting, we're putting it together so we can measure the economy's overall performance. Think of it as accounting for the economy as a whole. That's one way to think of it. If you want to do the accounting for the entire economy, here it is. National income accounting. Now, in terms of checking the progress of the economy over time, in terms of figuring out the production levels, in terms of figuring out do we grow, how do we stabilize, as I said, the starting point is here. There is one particular measure that we need to get a very good handle on. The measure of the overall production in society that we're going to start with is called the gross domestic product. And it is the beginning of the conversation of macro, the GDP. And I'm going to show you how to put this together, what it looks like, where we get it, so on and so on. The GDP, the gross domestic product. So any conversation about formulated policy making, it begins here, the GDP. And let me give you a definition, and then I want to show you how we put it together. So the GDP, this is... The market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given time period. Let me give you a minute to write that. The GDP, the gross domestic product. This is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given time period. We're going to break this down because you need to understand exactly what the GDP is. The market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given time period. Think of it this way. Very crudely, the GDP is trying to value every single good or service that we produce within the nation. I mean all of it. And the National Income Accountants put this together. In the United States, the GDP is calculated quarterly. So every quarter they go through and they figure out the total production. Everything that we produce within that particular time period, they value it and put it all together. I mean everything. The shoes, the shoelaces, the little plastic on the shoelace. Every single good or service that we produce here is valued, tallied up, and put together for the GDP. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It is not an easy process, but the National Income Accountants, they're smart people. And I'm going to show you a neat little way that they put this together. Now, I want you to be very clear on what the GDP captures. So certain key terms 
within this definition. I want to take them out and tell you what they are because the GDP is very specific. I want you to know exactly what it captures. The first thing I want to take out is that market value. So certain things in the definition, I want you to be aware of what they are. And I'm going to start with the market value. GDP is really the total market value. GDP is looking at everything we produce. How many cars, how many bottled water, how many dry erase, how many paper clips, how many rounds of paper. Every single thing that we produce, we want to put it all together. Technically, in the rawest way, the GDP, somebody could ask, what is the GDP for the United States? And we could give a really ridiculous answer. It would be correct, but it would be ridiculous. Where we could say 20 million cars, 5,000 t-shirts, 2,000 clocks, 5,000 iPhones. That doesn't make a whole bunch of sense, but technically that's what the GDP is. Every single thing that we produce. Now for the GDP to make sense, for we to watch it over time, for we to use it for policy making, we have to have a unit of account. If somebody says to me the GDP for the United States is 20,000 bottled water, 5,000 sneakers, and 200 Jesus, well that doesn't make sense to me. If somebody says to me, the GDP is close to $18 trillion for the United States, that makes sense. That's what we mean by the market value. We need to find a way to have a unit of account so that we can watch the value of the GDP from one period to the next. So we can know if we're doing a good job or a bad job. So that we can know if we're hitting a target or not. And when we do that, we do that at the market value. So even though GDP is total production of goods and services, we need to find a way to kind of value it. Give it a unit of account so that it can be in a particular format that makes sense. So let me give you a note for the market value. Total production. We must add together production, all goods and services. So everything that we produce, we've got to add them together for it to make sense. I'm going to do a very crude example. The idea here is we use prices at which each item is traded in the market. So that's the idea. We are using the prices at which each item is traded in the market. And I'm going to do a very crude example to get an idea of what I'm trying to do here, or what GDP is trying to do, rather. Do a very crude example. Let's say this society is producing apples. So we're going to say the price of apples. Let's say, let's say this is 10 cents. <coughs> price of apples, 10 cents. And let's say this society produces 50 apples. So the market value of 50 apples. How much is that? This shouldn't be hard. It's not the hard part. Five dollars, yeah? The market value of 50 apples. Five bucks. Yeah? Is that the price of apples? Is the price of apples? In the marketplace. We have some concept of equilibrium is the idea here. Yeah? So price of apples is 10 cents. Market value of the 50 apples, what it's sold for in the market, we're going to say it's $5. Let's say they also produce oranges. So let's see. Price of oranges. <coughs> put that at. <coughs> so let's say the price of oranges is 20 cents. And let's say they produce 100 oranges. So the market value of 100 oranges. What's this one? The 100 oranges, the market value? $20. 20 bucks. Yeah? Now, technically, the GDP, let's say this nation only produces apples and oranges. Technically, the GDP is 50 apples and 100 oranges. But that doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. Because what happens next year when we start producing steaks? And what happens the year after that when we start doing bananas? How do we compare from one year to the next? We're going to have to have a unit of account. Which means what makes more sense is to then say the GDP is really 25 bucks. 
Well, that makes sense. That we can compare from one year to the next. So instead of looking at the raw production values, we have to take a market value for them. That's the idea when we say the market value. So we're going to have to have a unit of account. And in most cases, not only the United States, a lot of countries tend to quote their GDP in dollars. Okay? So that's the market value. Questions? Still going to break down some other pieces of the GDP definition. But that's the market value. We are interested in what's produced, not necessarily what's sold. But we still need to kind of value that. And we do that at the price at which they're sold on the market or traded in the market. Okay? But we're not looking at total sales. We're looking at what was produced, what was made. That's the GDP. Yeah? Let's tear out another piece of the definition. I want you to know what I mean when I say final goods and services. It's another one. This, <laughs> final goods and services. So let's look at that one. When we say it's a final good or service, which is what GDP is interested in, this is an item that is bought by its last user during a specified time period. So final good or service, this is an item that is bought by its last user during a specified time period. <laughs> That's the final good or service. And that's all we're interested in when it comes to the GDP. We're not interested in intermediate goods. So an item bought by its final user. So I'll give you an example so you can see what's going on here. Let's say um, we have a Ford Explorer, the truck. Yeah, The Ford Explorer should have four tires. It should have a steering wheel, where we hope. Yeah, it should have radio. So on and so on. It's made of component parts. So when I go to go buy the Ford Explorer, or the Ford Explorer is produced, rather, what's counted in the GDP, is the market value, let's say I pay 40000 for it, is the market value associated with that Ford Explorer. We cannot and we will not include the market value of the four tires, the market value of the steering wheel, the market value of the radio, and then also the market value of the Ford Explorer. Why? What's wrong with that? We'd be double counted. We'd be double counted. Yeah? So this is to avoid double counting. Very good. We are only interested in the final good or service. So we want to pick it up when it hits the final user. So the national income accountant, they need to go through figure out the market value associated with the goods and services, and all the production, they gotta take a minute to look at it. So, do we take the sneakers? And what about these shoelaces? Are they going into sneakers? Mm. What about the little plastic that goes on the shoelace? Is that, it actually gets that intricate, okay? So they're only interested in the <coughs> final good or service and they got to pick up the market value associated with it. Okay? Question so far. Because I want to tell you exactly what I mean when we say produced within a particular country. That's the other thing. That's another big deal in the definition. And I'm going to show you how to put the GDP together. Any questions? GDP is the total market value of all final goods and services produced within a country. And when we say within a country, we literally mean within a country. So when we say within a country, produce within a country, it's very important that you know what that means in the context of GDP. We mean what is produced within the national borders of the country in general, or the country in question, sorry. So within a country, what is produced within the national borders of the country in question? So whatever country we're looking at, we're only interested in what is produced there, within those national borders. And we mean geographically what's there. For example, let's say we have a South Korean company. Let's say Kia 
is producing cars in Ohio. Even though that company is a foreign company, the car is being produced in Ohio, it's counted in our GDP. Let's say Apple has a factory in China and they're producing iPhones in China. Even though that's an American company, if it's not produced here, it's not counted in our GDP. So we are only interested in what's produced within the national boundaries of the country. That's what we're picking up with GDP. We don't care who owns the company. We don't care if it's an MNC, a multinational company. Once it's produced here, we count it in the GDP.